Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Emerson College Polling. I'm joined today by my research assistant, Camille Mumford, and we're taking a look at a new national poll. And Camille, last time we looked at this race, we saw on the Democratic side a ranking with Biden up at the top and uh, Mayor Pete down, you know, really in not even in single digits, uh, not even in fractions. So what have we seen in this new March poll? So you've seen that Biden and Sanders are both tied for the first place at 26%. And, Which, how, and so Biden was at, what, 17? He was at 17%, So yes. he's a plus 9, and Biden, Sanders was at 17, Biden was at... 27, so, so he, he lost he, one point. Okay, so he's pretty much staying still. We're seeing Sanders jumping up. What about Harris? So Harris is at 12% in March. Which is down from. Yeah, last I think month. that's three points yep. because we saw her bounce into the election, but now she seems to be settling in that double, but it's a strong double digit for yeah, her. For sure. uh, what about so Elizabeth Warren? Warren in March is at 8% right now. And where was she back in? She was at 9%. So, so she's she down uh, a little bit, but again, she's like a known name out there where I think people are looking at others, but her base seems to be holding pretty strong. How about Cory Booker, who also oh. looked, he was bouncing up in the polls. Right, but he's at 3% this month. Oh, that's, what, a six-point drop? Yep. So he seems to have come back from that bounce. What about Klobuchar, who Klobuchar, also? Yeah, she's at 1%, so she's struggling in this poll as well. So that, that announcement out in the snow maybe has melted away her lead. Uh, what about that. Beto, who just jumped into the race? So Beto definitely had a Beto bounce at 11% in this poll, which was up from last month uh, seven points. So we're seeing him now all the way up, and he's basically statistically tied with Harris, and he's in that second tier of candidates. And then we have Mayor Pete, who seems to have broken through. Yes, Mayor Pete is at a solid 3%, which is much better than 0%, which is last month. And so now as we look forward, uh, obviously Joe Biden has not entered the race. Do we think that uh, when he does enter, we're going to see a similar bounce like we've seen for these other candidates, and will he be able to sustain it? It's interesting because, I mean, Sanders was already a recognitionable name, so he didn't ask, and he had a significant bounce. So there's some saying that he, know, he won't have a bounce because he's already a known candidate, but Sanders is also a known candidate, and he had a bounce. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Yeah, and as we've seen in some of the state polling that we've done, we've definitely seen Sanders now being able to compete with Biden, particularly in Wisconsin. And I believe this week we'll take a look back in Iowa to see if that caucus state has changed as the race is continuing to be fluid. Sure. And now we're going to take a look at the Republican side of the field, and I'm joined by my research assistant, Cole Moots. And let's begin with the Republican primary, where Trump continues to hold a very strong lead with about 90% of the vote over a potential candidate of Bill Weld. And Cole, if we take a look, though, at the general election, the Trump lead is certainly going to be uh, dissolved down yes. yeah. um, as um, we start looking so at head-to-head -head matchups. He's doing a lot worse uh, in a general election. He's um, trailing Joe Biden. Um, 45 to 55 percent, um, um, and the only candidate he is losing against, or sorry, winning against is O'Rourke, and it's a, it's a narrow lead of, of 51, I believe, to 49 percent. So what's interesting is that he's competing or trailing slightly the Democratic candidates, but if you recall back in 1980 with Ronald Reagan, he said that basically if these four issues are in your going in your direction, then you should actually stick with Jimmy Carter. But if yes. they're not, it's time for a change. Yeah. So do you remember those four questions? Yes. The first one was, um, are, you be are you better off today than you were four years ago? Are you better off than you were four years ago? Um, and 63% of respondents said that they were better off. And then, then we, we asked, asked um, is it easier to go to a store and buy things? And is it easier for you to go and buy things in the stores than it was four years ago? And 61% said it is easier to buy things at the store. Furthermore, we asked about unemployment. Is there more or less unemployment in the country than there was four years ago? And 70% said unemployment has gone down in the last so four years. So these are all very positive indicators. The only one that didn't was a positive was the issue of the U.S. as a strong presence well, is, in the if, world. If it has the same kind of prestige in the world as it, as it once did. Is America as respected throughout the world as it was? Do you feel that our security is as safe, that we're as strong as we were four years ago? And 55% said it did not 
have the strength or prestige that, you, that, you, that it had four years ago. And what's interesting is these are pretty solid economic numbers, and yet you're showing that Trump is having a problem in this race. Yeah. What um, do you make of it? Well, it seems like the astronomy's, economy is definitely a strong point, um, but if the economy were to, say, weaken or not be as good as it is now, let's say a year ago, ago it might be really detrimental to his, um, to his support, considering that this is... Uh, his support now is still below water, and these are these numbers. Now, do you think that the voters are not giving him the credit for the economy, presuming that it's just kind of happening, yeah. and they're m maybe looking the other way? I'd say it's a mix between voters not giving him credit and um, voters not really making this a pocketbook issue for the, the campaign. I mean, the economy's not really on people's minds because it's good, right? So I think that unless it was to go sour, I don't think people are going to vote with their pockets again. I think they're, they're going to vote with... Um, with other factors. Well, thank you very much for the analysis. I look forward to looking this week into the Iowa caucus. We took a look at that a couple months ago, and now that the candidates have announced, we'll be back in the field this weekend, and we'll be back next week with those results.